So diving into the leukocytes, these are the WBCs, or the white blood cells. The major function of the white blood cells it is to fight off the foreign invaders that come inside our body. And unlike RBC, the WBC do not have do not have hemoglobin. That is why they're not red in color. And another difference from the RBC is that they are nucleated, all of them. Whatever WBC you will find, they are nucleated. Their number is about, you know, 6,000 to 8,000 per millimeter cube of blood. And we're speaking about the whole blood here. So there are 6,000 to 8,000 WBCs per millimeter cube of the whole blood. They are short-lived and they can be categorized into two different categories. That is the granulocytes. Let's put it over here, WBCs. And let's put one category as granulocytes. And the other one is agranulocytes. And you might have guessed it that the granulocytes, they would contain some cytoplasmic granules, which are not present, no granules in the agranulocytes. Right, so the granulocytes, there are three kinds of granulocytes, and these are the neutrophils, the neutrophils, and neutrophils are about, you know, if we take the whole amount of RBC that are present, they are 60 to 65% of the whole RBC, sorry, the whole WBC. And the second one is the um, basophils. These are the least in numbers of the whole WBC that is present. So neutrophils were the highest in number and basophils are the least in number. So these are about um, 0.5 to 1% of WBC. Third are the eosinophils. And the eosinophils are about, you know, two to three percent of the whole WBC. And all of them have different functions. Now the neutrophils and the monocytes. All right, let's let's talk about the agranulocytes type, and then we'll dive into the function. So the agranulocytes. There are two kinds of agranulocytes. One is the monocyte, which is about um, six to eight percent, and finally the lymphocytes, which is about um, twenty to twenty-five percent. Right, and these lymphocytes are further can be divided into the B lymphocyte or the B cell and the T lymphocyte or the T cell. And we know that the B lymphocytes, they produce the antibodies that fight off the antigens that are coming from the outside. Um, if we now speak about some of the functions, now neutrophils and monocytes, so neutrophils over here and monocytes over here. What they do, they are phagocytic cells. So let me write it over here. 
neutrophils and monocytes they are phagocytic cells right they destroy foreign organisms that enter our body next if we talk about the basophils they are responsible for inflammatory reactions inflammatory reactions now these are localized reactions inside our body that uh, sort of gives us the sensation of pain and that place of that place of inflammation swells up and stuff like that um, the basophils they basically the inflammatory reaction that it is caused by the uh, different kinds of molecules of histamines you know that is why uh, when there is an inflammation doctors prescribe antihistamine molecule antihistamine medicines so histamines serotonin heparin now heparin is another molecule which is pr uh, present when there is an inflammation but also it is required in uh, it is an important component of the blood clotting system all right so this was basophils now if we talk about eosinophils eosinophils are um, eosinophils are present when there is any allergic reactions right. so neutrophils they are phagocytic cells along with monocytes basophils they are inflammatory reaction they are uh, cells that causes inflammatory reactions by releasing molecules like histamine serotonin and heparin Finally, eosinophils, they are responsible for allergic reactions. And I have already talked about the um, lymphocytes, which, you know, differentiate into B cells and T cells. And the B cells, they produce the antibodies. And the T cells, are again, they are responsible for, you know, cytotoxicity. they interact directly with the antigen whereas the b cells interact with the antigen through antibodies now this was a brief about the leukocytes next moving on with the platelets another formed element so platelets another name was thrombocytes if you remember thrombocytes right they are the platelets they are formed from some specialized cells called megakaryocytes so their origin is from cells called megakaryocytes sites and these myocarrier sites they're present in the bone marrow if we talk about the number they are you know a huge huge amount in number so the figure is something like this Platelets per millimeter cube of blood. And, uh, you know, like platelets, they are uh, involved in the clotting of blood. They release a variety of factors. That is why the clotting takes place. Release a variety of factors. And we're going to see what are the factors that are released and how blood clotting actually proceeds factors during clotting and if we if there is a reduction if there is a reduction of platelets 
then that might cause some clotting disorders. Right, so that was about platelets and we also talked about the WBCs, the different kinds of WBCs. And further, we are going to speak about the blood grouping. And after that, we are going to talk about the um, blood clotting mechanism, how it takes place. So moving on with that.